In this video, we're going to be looking at how to check an anaesthetic machine. The machine that we're using is a Datex Aspire, but the techniques are universal and can be applied to any anaesthetic machine that requires a manual test. These checks are based on the AAGBI safety guideline called Checking Anaesthetic Equipment 2012, which can be found on the Association of Anaesthetists.org website. The first item on the checklist is the power supply. There can be some variation in the location of the on switch for the machine, but they're usually somewhere near the front. All modern machines should have a battery backup in case of a power failure. And one way to check that this is working is to turn the machine on whilst having the power at the wall supply turned off. But once we've established that the battery is working, we must remember to turn the mains power on. Next, we look at the gas supply and we'll start with the pipelines. Gently pull on the pipelines to ensure that they are securely connected. Ensure that there is at least four bar of pressure within the pipelines by reviewing the board and gauges on the front of the machine. Open the cylinders and check their contents using the corresponding gauges. The pressure within a full oxygen cylinder is approximately 137 bar. Once checked, it's vital that the cylinders are then turned off. Ensure that the rotameters are working correctly by turning them all on and watching the bobbins rise. Pay close attention to the white dot on each of the bobbins. It's a visual indication that the gas is actually flowing. The hypoxic guard is a fail-safe mechanism to ensure that we cannot deliver a hypoxic mixture to our patients. On this particular machine, the hypoxic guard is called a LINK25 system because the oxygen and nitrous oxide are linked together in such a way that the minimum concentration that can be delivered is 25% oxygen. When you turn the oxygen off, the nitrous oxide should stop as well. If the nitrous oxide is turned on on its own, then the oxygen should follow. Note that it stays at a ratio of 25%. If the oxygen supply from the pipeline were to fail, the supply of nitrous oxide should automatically shut off. And we can test this by unplugging the oxygen pipeline and watching the rotameters. Additionally, this allows us to test the oxygen failure alarm. First, check if the vaporizer has a sufficient amount of volatile agent and top up if required. Check the function of each of the vaporizers and ensure that they are seated correctly on the back bar. You should not be able to turn on two vaporizers at the same time. This style of vaporizer uses two interlocking pins that extend when the vaporizer is turned on. This depresses the neighboring pin and stops it from being able to be engaged. If you have two vaporizers mounted onto the back bar, you can test this system by turning one on and attempting to turn the second one on at the same time. Test the effectiveness of the suction by occluding the suction tubing and watching the pressure build on the gauge. This test allows us to check for leaks in the rotameters, the back bar and the vaporizers, and it utilises a negative pressure test balloon like this one. First, engage the auxiliary common gas outlet. This is achieved by flicking the switch on the front of the machine. Some machines will sound an alarm to draw attention to this. When testing the rotameters in this way, 
it is essential that they are turned off. If your machine happens to have a residual flow, then the power to the anaesthetic machine will have to be turned off to complete this test. Connect the test bulb to the gas outlet and squeeze to remove the air. If it remains deflated, there are no leaks in the system. Leaks in the vaporizers can be tested in exactly the same way. Ensure that the test is repeated for each of the vaporizers on the back bar. Whilst the outlet is engaged, you can test the emergency oxygen flush. When the test is finished, it's imperative that the switch is returned to its original position to avoid any adverse incidents. Attach a test lung or bag to the patient end of the breathing system. Set the fresh gas flow to 5 litres per minute and manually ventilate, checking the function of the unidirectional valves. Remove the bag and occlude the patient end of the breathing system. This test must be undertaken with all of the flows turned off. Screw the APL valve closed and pressurise the system using the oxygen flush button. We're now looking to see if any of the air that's in the system is leaking out and we can use the pressure gauges on the anaesthetic machine to help us with this. Whether you're using the analogue gauge or the digital one on the monitor, if there are any leaks in the system, you will see the pressure begin to drop. With the system still pressurised, we can check the APL valve. Open the valve to 20 centimetres of water and see how this change in pressure is reflected in the pressure gauge. Inspect the colour of the soda lime, ensuring that it's ready for use. Keeping the rotameters turned off, reattach the test bag to the patient end of the breathing system. Engage the ventilator by flicking the switch. Fill the bellows right to the top using the oxygen flush and then turn your attention to the ventilator controls. As you can see, this ventilator has been set with a pressure limit of 40, an inspiratory to expiratory ratio of 1 to 2, a respiratory rate of 16 and a tidal volume of 500 mils. If the ventilator is working correctly, it should be delivering this tidal volume within 6 breaths with a tolerance of 10% either side. We can check this by looking here and watching the bellows rise and fall. Remember, if the bellows do not come right to the top, then there is a leak in the system. One, two, three, four, Five, six. The ventilator will have a high pressure alarm and a low pressure or disconnect alarm. To test the high pressure alarm, squeeze the patient bag as the bellows are delivering a breath. To test the low pressure alarm, simply disconnect the patient bag. The ventilator will attempt to deliver a few breaths and then the alarm should sound. Once this is complete, flick the switch back for spontaneous breathing. If the scavenging is working correctly, the ball will be floating in the green section between the two red lines. Please note in this example the scavenging is turned off. 
That brings us to the end of our anaesthetic machine checklist. But don't forget the other pieces of anaesthetic equipment that need to be checked before you start your list.